number 65. An important source of copper is from the copper ore called chalcocite, which is a form of copper 1 sulfide. When heated, the Cu2S decomposes to form copper and sulfur, which is described by the following equation over here. Cu2S solid will yield copper solid plus sulfur solid. Now for letter B. It says the reaction of sulfur with oxygen yields sulfur dioxide as the only product. Write an equation that describes this reaction and then determine the delta G notch for the process. All right, so seems like all this jazz we don't need. We just need to write an equation for sulfur with oxygen produces or yields sulfur dioxide. So sulfur, they kind of give us a little hint here that sulfur is just going to be by itself. So it's a sulfur that's in a solid state plus oxygen, right? Sulfur and oxygen are coming together. And remember, oxygen is a diatomic and that always is a gas, to yield, there's my yield sign, sulfur dioxide. So they only said I had one sulfur, so that's S. Di means two in chemistry, so two oxides, SO2. And SO2 is going to be a gas. Now, let's balance, but as I'm looking at this, it's already balanced, thank goodness, right? So the equation is good. And now we just have to determine that Gibbs free energy. Now it's a standard, right? There's a notch here, which means that I can go in the back of the book and find out all of the delta G values for each individual component. So I wrote the one that we're going to use for the sulfur dioxide, right? Sulfur dioxide's delta G is a negative 300.1. But now what is the delta G values for sulfur and oxygen? Well, since these are in their elemental states, right, diatomics, they're natural, and so is this sulfur solid by itself, anytime that you have a, a, a natural, like, elemental substance, no compounds, the delta G for it is always zero. So we know that these two are zero, but since this is a compound, I had to go in the back of the book to find out that that was negative 300.1. But now... What am I going to do? What's the formula to get a delta G overall? Well, it's this formula right here, right? Delta G for the whole entire reaction, Rxn is reaction, is the sum. This is just a fancy thing for sum. The sum of all the products minus the sum of all the reactants. So the first thing is, is you just have to look at how many you have in your balanced equation. But since this is balanced and everyone has one, I'm going to take the values and times them by their coefficients, just to show you that they all should be multiplied by one. But now I just have to add the reactants together, but zero plus zero is just zero. And this side I don't have to add because it's only one substance. So this is negative 300.1. And now I can use my formula. Delta G for the whole entire reaction is the product, which is negative 300.1 minus the reactant, which is a zero. Delta G for the whole entire reaction is negative 300.1. I mean, if you don't believe me, we could just plug it in to the calci, right? Boom. Okay. Delta G for the whole entire reaction is negative 300.1. And now the units are just going to be kilojoules because the ones that we multiplied are the moles. So moles will cancel out. So we're just left with kilojoules. So the delta G for this reaction is negative 300.1 kilojoules. So this is a spontaneous reaction. It's a negative value. And there you go. I think we have one more point for... One more point, but one more part for this one. So hang tight. If you guys are on the playlist, I'll see you in a little bit. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for all your support. And let's just keep learning. All right. Let's keep trying hard, working through the problems. And I'll see you in a little bit. Bye-bye.